Hey what's up hello guys, it's Mika aka Mika Reads and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be reviewing all the books I read in the month of February and I'm super excited to sh review them with you guys. Honestly I read a total of 8 books and I loved all of them. I don't think there was a single one that I didn't rate 4 stars or higher. Honestly it would be 5 stars or higher but there was only one in here that I gave a 4.25 and we will get to it. I want to say like I am a sucker for romance and if I really love a book it's gonna be a 5. I rarely give out 4 stars. There have been a couple but these are all 5's for me and yes I know I do need to get stricter with my reviewing but you guys will see why I love these books when I talk about them. Cutting in real quick just to tell you guys because I forgot to mention it while I was filming my intro that this video is spoiler free so don't worry you can watch this video even if you haven't read some of the books because I won't be giving away any spoilers. Anyways let's go ahead and get started. The first book that I read in the month of February or finished in the month of February I should say is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. Honestly going into this book I thought I was gonna hate it. Like, genuinely, I thought I was going to hate it because this book, instead of focusing on the main characters of Feyre and Reason, it actually focuses on Feyre's oldest sister, Nesta Archeron. And up until this book, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I hated Nesta. Hated Nesta. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to love a book that's completely about her. However, about halfway through, a lot happens and it really does change my perspective on what I thought about Nesta. And I ended up loving it. This book made me sob the last hundred pages. Like, I was crying my heart. Like, it was overall just a really good book. And if you're like me who struggled to get through the first half, and let me just tell you, just, just keep going. It is so worth it. Like, I struggled reading the first 200 pages. It took me, like, over a week to read through the first half of this book because I kept getting irritated with Nesta and I'd put it down. However, as I kept reading, I found that there was more time of me reading this book and then putting it down. And eventually I finished and I really loved it. Like the story building is really good. Like the character development in this book, top tier. Like I sincerely from my heart give this book a chance. Like I can honestly say I'm a Nesta Archeron fan after this book. 5 out of 5. Moving on to the second book I read, which is Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. This is the fourth book in the Twisted series, and also the longest. This book is about 500 something pages. Overall, I really like this book. I was a little biased, and I'm gonna say that because I was seeing, like, everyone's photos of what Christian Harper looked like on TikTok. If there are any Christian Harper plans, please, fans, please do not hate me for saying this, but I don't like how I don't like the photo that they're using for Christian Harper. I do not find him attractive. I am sorry. I don't know if he's an actor or not, but I, I don't. So I was a little like, ugh. But like reading this book, I really loved it. If you're into like the fake dating or like slow burn, this is the book for you. Fake dating, slow burn, like ugh. Forced proximity. I really loved Twisted Lies. Don't get me wrong, Twisted Love, the first book of the Twisted series, is my favorite. I just... I don't know, something about Alex Volkov. In every single book, he just kept on getting better. So for those who do not know, Twisted series is centered around four girls who are best friends. Each of the girls have a book, so you will see characters from the previous books in this book, as well as future characters from the King of Sin series in this book. So if you're wondering in what order to read it in, you should read the Twisted series before you read the Kings of Sin series, just so you don't get spoiled because you are going to see the Twisted characters in there. Anyways, with Christian and Stella's story, it just, it brought me along. Like, I felt like I was there with them. I really love this book. Um, their relationship development was a little slow in the beginning, and I didn't like that. However, it is slow burn. I was just really anxious for something to happen. When it did, it just made it, like, a hundred times better because of the weight. Like, this book, you guys have to go ahead and read the Twisted series, if you already haven't, and read Twisted Lies. I also realized that I never gave a reading for this book. This is a 5 out of 5, by the way. The next book that I read is Throne of Glass, also by Sarah J. Mass. So my intent was to read that guitar series and then start the Throne of Glass series so I could read the Crescent City series. And I have been slacking. I read Throne of Glass and I was going to start Crown of Midnight right after, but I couldn't get it. I couldn't find it anywhere and buy it. 
but I got it. It's on my bookshelf, so I will be starting it soon. But Throne of Glass, 5 out of 5. Like, I really love the Akatar series, and I was like, okay, this one's always going to be my favorite. However, Throne of Glass alone is making me question if Akatar is going to save my, stay at my favorite. Because the world building and the action in this is just so much more. Like, I really like the main character, Selena, a lot. Like, I love her backstory. I love her personality as a character. And just overall how she progresses as the story goes through. You see a lot of development in, like, both mentally and physically. And I really love that. I kind of, like, related to her at one point and really connected with her. And I guess it's just another thing. Like, I really love strong, independent female main characters. And she is a badass female main character. Five out of five from me, first of all. And so if you're looking for a more, like, world-building, not really spicy. Like, there's not a lot of spice in her Throne of Glass series, I heard, just because she's, like, a young adult series. This was um one of my best friends and high school's favorite series, so I heard a lot about it. Um, throughout high school. I actually read a little bit of Assassin's Blade back then, but I never got into reading Throne of Glass. Really regret it because maybe I would have started a booktube sooner. Maybe I would have been more immersed in books sooner. I read a lot when I was in middle school, but kind of died down in high school, and I really regret that a lot. Anyways, I'm getting a little off topic. Really do love this. There's sort of a love triangle, and I'm saying a love triangle in this book or sort of, because it's not entirely confirmed, but there are two love interests that I shepherd with, and it's just, ah, ah, the magic, the world, I cannot wait to read Crown of Midnight. Go ahead, if you haven't already, go read Throne of Glass, and thank you again to the person who bought this off my Amazon wishlist, Joey, I believe. He actually bought this book for me, so I got to read it because of him, and I am eternally grateful because I am about to, like, dive into another series that I know I'm gonna love. So right after I finished Throne of Glass, um, I actually ended up getting a Kindle and I got to read these three books on the Kindle, which is the first three books of the King of Sin series by Anna Huang, which I was talking about earlier. She is the same author of Twisted. This is a series that you're going to read after you finish Twisted and I read them back to back. So starting with the first book, King of Wrath, absolutely love this one. And <laughs> I'm going to say that about this book, but I'm probably going to say it about the other two because as I kept reading on to the next book, I was like, oh my god, this is even better. Anna Huang never misses. That is like what I take away from reading the Twisted series and King of Sin series. Like I absolutely love her books and I cannot wait for the fourth book of the series to come out. Going back to King of Wrath, my favorite trope is enemies to lovers. It's always going to be my favorite trope. Zayden and Violet, Feyre and Reason. Mwah! Love enemies to lovers. And this isn't really, I want to say enemies to lovers, however I'm viewing it that way, because what sets this book is an arranged marriage. So the main male character, Dante, doesn't want to marry Vivian, but there's an arranged marriage, so they have to get married. So that's why I think of it kind of like an enemies to lovers, because it's like, he doesn't like her, he doesn't want to marry her, She's kind of forced into this. They don't like each other. And then, as it states, to lovers. But if you are into the arranged marriage, this was the first book that I ever read with an arranged marriage in it. And I loved it. I, I genuinely love this book a lot. Like, from seeing the development in not only Vivian as a female main character, but in Dante as well. Like, seeing, like, the male's perspective. Because all of Anna Huang's books, she does a dual point of view. So it'll be the female main characters and then the male main characters. That way you can see a little bit into both of their heads and their perspectives. Was just super nice. Because I could, like, you know, like, go on this ride with them. Get to, like, see how his feelings progress as well as hers. And then you know, just be immersed in it. Like, overall, I really love this book. And let me just tell you right now, the spice in this book, chef's kiss, man. I thought the Twisted series spice was good. This spice, mwah. The mirror scene and the limo scene. And that is all I'm going to say because I'm not going to give spoilers, but the limo scene and the, the mirror scene. Five out of five. And then going into the next book, which is the second book of the King of Sin series, we have King of Pride, which is centered around Kai and Isabella. For those who do not know, Kai and Dante are friends, and Vivian and Isabella are friends. So kind of like the Twisted series, the King of Sin series also 
kind of features around people from the same friend group and I say that just because like in the third book the main character wasn't best friends with these three girls at first but now she's in the group so that's why I kind of say friend group but anyways King of Pride let me just read you guys the dedication real quick for all the girls who think smart is sexy and who know the quiet ones are the freakiest <laughs> the dedication alone like got me that is <sighs> and she's speaking facts so a little bit of that Kai who is the main male character he's like he's gonna be a CEO there's a CEO vote this isn't spoilers by the way because it's literally on the back of the book and he's like you know your typical like shy like kind of nerdy quiet guy and then you have Isabella who's like the life of the party black and violet hair like crazy so I really like this dynamic the two of them have there's like their banter is super cute and overall just the scenes that they have with each other because they are they're like opposites even the back says she's his opposite in every way like opposites attract and this book is like the epitome of that opposites do attract I really did love this book as well along with like the story and like you know like the social standards because when it comes to like rich wealthy people it's always like you know you gotta marry into money you gotta marry this person you need someone who's of your status and this kind of goes against it which I really like and just seeing like the challenges that they have to face and overcome together is super cute in the way that they support each other really really love king of pride this is a five out of five if you guys can't already tell and we're gonna be moving on to the third book of the kings of sin series which is king of greed so king of greed features a kind of like a second chance type of so the two main characters alessandra and dominic were married however they do um she wants to leave him and like i said this isn't a spoiler this is the back of the book so it's kind of like a like a divorce type of story i don't know i don't know like the main term i am new to book talk again along with like all of like the new book words because i haven't read a lot like this since middle school so forgive me if i'm like missing what this trope is called but they were married and then they divorced so that is all i have this book hurt overall just seeing like the character development as well as like the story and relationship and just overall, like, how a lot of books are, the challenges that they face and how they choose to overcome this. And watching from um, Dominic's perspective a lot, like, reading his point of views was a really, like, it just, like, clenches my heart. Like, this book has my heart in, like, a chokehold. It just, I don't know, man. I can't, I can't even explain this into words without spoiling it, but... It just makes you so emotional because you get to see like how he feels and what he's willing to do for her. And then you get to her point of view, Alessandra's, and it's just like her mental headspace like broke my heart because I was also in a position like that once. And it just, you guys just have to read this book for yourself to find out. It was a 5 out of 5 for me and honestly I cannot wait for book 4. The next book that I read this month, and it is so far my favorite book of the year, and I didn't think I would say this about this book because I read the Akatar series. And for those who do not know, the Akatar series is my favorite series. Recent is my number one book boyfriend, tied with Zayn and Rarson. But still, this book blew me away. For those who do not know, the fine print is part of the Dreamland Billionaire series, which is a three book series um, revolving around three brothers. Okay, I have been wanting to get into like annotating for the longest time and the wonderful thing about a Kindle is you can highlight on there. Um, I highlighted for the King of Sin series because those were the first books that I read on the Kindle and when I checked out how much I highlighted on the fine print, this is like a 400 page book, 420 pages, I highlighted 226 times. 200, like that's like one every two pages. Like I really, really love this book. I love billionaire romances like so so much I even after reading this book I made a little playlist called I'm just a girl who loves billionaire romances here it is right here by the way and I'm gonna go ahead and also put the link below if you guys want to follow it billionaire romances have a chokehold on me they're the reason why my new goal in life is to be a CEO a millionaire and a billionaire so I can be rich like them the way they can just 
spend money and go on trips and like spoil those who they love like that's what I want to do I want to be able to give back to my parents for everything they've done for me I want to be able to spoil my boyfriend for everything that he's also done for me because I'm a broke college student right now and he pays a lot of the stuff so I want to be able to get back to him. This book is not only a billionaire romance, it's also a grumpy and sunshine trope romance. And grumpy and sunshine is like my second favorite trope. Second only to enemies and lovers. Like I love grumpy and sunshine. Alex Volkov and Ava Chen were a grumpy and sunshine. It's just so cute and it's like super... I don't know, it's like makes you super emotional when you watch like the grumpy dude start to develop a soft spot for the sunshine girl. Like. It's just so cute, and the spice in this, don't even get me started. The spice in this book, the spice was so good. And not only that, but their relationship building, their bantering, their bantering was so good too. Like, I, words cannot express how much I love the fine print. First of all, obvious 5 out of 5 for me. There was no way this wasn't a 5 out of 5 for me. Sorry, my eyes are all teary because I just had a coughing fit from how much I've been talking, but this book was super cute. And I'm really sorry if that's all I'm saying about these books because this is my first time doing a review video. So I'm a little new to this. I don't really know what else to say besides spoiling it, but just know that I... I stayed up to read this book, I read this book like everywhere and anywhere, and it will capture your heartstrings. If you're looking for that billionaire, grumpy sunshine romance, this is the book for you. If you want to fall in love with a millionaire guy, a millionaire fictional guy, this is the book for you! Go ahead, go read it, 5 out of 5, best, best book of the month for me. And we are coming to the last book I read this month, which is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I just finished it last night and uh, let me tell you I'm now a hockey romance fan Nate Hawkins you have turned me into a hockey romance fan so the reason that I gave this book a 4.25 and this is the only book that I did not give a 5 this month is only because of the ending I felt in my opinion that the ending was super rushed in a way like they didn't they could have given more insight on like the other characters in the stories as well as like um, the two main characters story before just getting an ending the way it ended and even up until you know like the ending like leading up to it everything still felt super rushed like as I was reading I was like oh there's only this much pages left but I feel like there's still a lot that needs to happen how are they gonna fit it and I got my answer it was like a little rush but overall I love this book Hannah Grace's book it was super good don't let the cover fool you. The cover may look so cutesy and whatnot, and trust me, I thought it was cutesy too. But I was also exposed to book talk, so I know that this cutesy little cover is a lie. <laughs> this is the spiciest, smuttiest book ever. <laughs> Misleading cover. Super smutty, super spicy. It does give me a lot of like Wattpad vibes, but I was a Wattpad girly in seventh grade. I read a lot of like the romance books on there. I read some like werewolf books on there. Yes, I did have a werewolf era, but it's okay because it's preparing me for reading Bride by Ali Hazelwood. But I really did love the story between these two, the dynamic. Um, this is kind of like a friends to lovers, almost like frenemies to lovers, and she herself calls them frenemies in this book. I also want to say that the comedy and the banter in this was also super funny. Like, a lot of, like, the side comments from the rest of the hockey team in this book were top tier. Like, there were moments where I was laughing out loud, like, reading this book in public. Like, it was just so gold. And I love just, like, the family that the characters have together. In a sense of what came along with it. Like, the rest of the team, like, the family, the friends, like... They're like relationships that all of the characters have just like really touches your heart because it's like oh they really love each other they really care about each other and they go to the ends of the world for each other and this is this is specifically about Henry Henry I am pretty sure he's getting a book and I hope he gets a book because I love Henry real MVP super funny super sweet super caring super lovable like i i just want to jump into this book and go ahead and give him a hug if you were thinking about reading this book you should go ahead and read it like yes it might give you wattpad vibes but i still think it was super fun to read about started my love for hockey romance and overall just super cute and to see like the family dynamic go ahead give it a try it's popular on book talk for a reason not just for the cute cover and it being about you know 
smut. <laughs> it's also just super good. But with that said, that is the end of my February reading wrap-up and the reviews of all the books I read this month. All eight of them, all super good. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Like I said, if it was a little like repetitive or boring, I'm super sorry. This is the first time that I've made a video like this and it was just kind of hard to find words, but I'm hoping as I like film more and more of these, I get better at it. But yeah, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what videos you guys want to see next. Bye-bye.